it don't bust. Chima Amanda, don't drag APC to the classroom. Actually, because I respect Professor Sherinka so much, I went back and watched the interview. I had watched it when it aired initially, but I went back and watched it because I thought, am I missing something? I think now we're talking about what does and mean? You know, and is a conjunction. We, we use it in that context often to mean plural, right? So we say um, Aisha and Yemi are coming. And we don't say Aisha and Yemi is coming. That's because they're two separate things, two separate entities. And of course, the, the court will interpret. But I don't, think, I don't think it's unreasonable for educated Nigerians who can read and who know what the word and means to make their own interpretations and to argue it. Jay, you need to watch this video to the end. No, 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 no. You need to watch this video to the end as I'll be bringing you just the highlight from Arise TV. Yo, welcome back. This is BVI Channel 1 and Stevie Benazu Channel the Peters. Back again to bring it to you as in the hot. Hey! <laughs> Chief Amanda. Chief. If I am not, let me not miss that one. Chief. Chief Amanda. The Odelowa. Which means the global writer. Had spoken and has taken APC, Laya Mohammed, including Professor Woiso Inka, to English class. And what happened is that this was an election that was, was really unforgivably flawed. And there's evidence for that. And I felt it was important to say that. But also, I wanted to, um, I wanted to call out the U.S. for what I consider a kind of two-facedness when it comes to Africa. So you know, the US has a long history of complicity in you know, sort of non-democratic um, elections on this continent. So recently in Congo, uh, two or three years ago, they endorsed an election that was an absolute sham. But then the same US will turn around and criticize Congo for not being democratic. And so my point was to say, be what you say you are. Yes, that, that certainly makes a lot of sense to a lot of people. But in, in reacting to your letter um, and some of the things that you, you said in it, the APC have suggested that you were not in Nigeria during the election and you did not vote and therefore should not make categorical statements about an election you did not witness. What's your reaction to that? Um, well, I don't, think it's a, I don't think it's very useful criticism. I should say, first of all, that I've never been phased by criticism. I mean, I wrote this, of course, knowing fully well that there would be criticism from certain quarters. Um, and it's been, I've seen a few things people have sent to me, and it's kind of been amusing to read the, um, to read the juvenile fulminations of non-juvenile people. But that said, um, I actually did try very hard. And I should say, I have two homes. I have, I have a home here in Lagos. I have a home in the US. Um, I'm very often here. I tried very hard to get my PVC. And the reason I tried very hard is because I had been assured that technology would save us, right? That, that it had walked in, or Shun walked in Ekiti, um, and I think in Anambra, that it would save us. And so I really tried. And we should also talk about how difficult it was to collect PVCs and how that in itself is a form of voter disenfranchisement. And so I had done the first part, but then I couldn't collect my PVC. And so yes, did not vote. But my not voting does not mean that I cannot comment on an election. I'm a Nigerian citizen. Um, I, I, every Nigerian citizen has a right to have an opinion about this election. I well, absolutely. And I suppose that that is also the crux to some extent of the uh, legal challenges that are ongoing at the moment in, in court. But in, in the sort of rather caustic response to that letter that you wrote to Mr. Biden, um, you, you mentioned uh, Mahmoud Yakubu there. Um, the Tinubu team have suggested that you may face a lawsuit over an allegation contained in your letter that Mr. Tinubu may have compromised the chairman of INEC, Mahmoud Yakubu. although you also point out that there is no evidence of the astronomical U.S. dollar amount he is rumored to have received from the president-elect. Are you worried about the possibility of a lawsuit? No, no, and um, I'm not worried about, at all. Again, I think that these are things that try to deflect 
from what is really important and what is at stake, it would be very useful if people could point out what is untrue in the letter. Yes, uh, again, people would agree with that assessment from you. But I wonder if I might change direction slightly and get your thoughts on the Nobel laureate uh, Walisha Yinka's assertion on Arise News about reactions to the election results by the Labour Party's vice presidential candidate, Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, comments which Professor Sayinka described as fascistic. I mean, do you see that as part of the demonization of Mr. B and his running mate, as some have suggested, or do you agree that Dati Baba Ahmed went or rather overstepped the bounds and Professor Suinke was in that regard justified to call him to order. I mean, I know you hold, or at least you have held Mr. Suinke in high esteem. I still do. Um, I, I have a lot of love for Professor Suinke. Um, I admire him. I respect him as a thinker, as a writer. Um, I think everyone should read The Man Died. And Ake, his memoir, is beautiful, right? Um, but at the same time, I, I disagree very strongly with him about this particular issue. And actually, because I respect Professor Sherenka so much, I went back and watched the interview. I had watched it when it aired initially, but I went back and watched it because I thought, am I missing something? And I, I think fascist is a really strong word. You know, fascist actually often makes me think of Mussolini's Italy. But I think we use it now, you know, sort of to... Uh, address this kind of authoritarianism that's often populist and right-wing, you know, like in Hungary, and, and even the, the former American president. And when you look at those situations, you can see why they have been termed fascist. Um, and I, I did not see any reason that um, Mr. Dati Baba Ahmed's interview would have been termed fascist. You know, I, I think he was making a very strongly um, felt point about the elections. Um, what he was saying, which again I thought seemed fairly reasonable, is um, that uh, if, the, if our democracy is rooted in our constitution and you then swear in a person who's been elected unconstitutionally, then you are in fact ending democracy. It's, I think it's quite a reasonable um, position. Of course we can argue about what that bit in the constitution means, right? And I'm actually grateful for this whole election period because it's made me read things I probably never would have, such as the Nigerian constitution, and also made me have quite a few suggestions for editing. But anyway, um, I think now we're talking about what does and mean, right? So, so Mr. Dati Baba Ahmed is saying that it's you know, two thirds and the FCT and that that's separate. And it's a reasonable argument. You know, and is a conjunction. We, we use it in that context often to mean plural, right? So we say um, Aisha and Yemi are coming. And we don't say Aisha and Yemi is coming. That's because they're two separate things, two separate entities. And of course the, the court will interpret. But I don't, think, I don't think it's unreasonable for educated Nigerians who can read and who know what the word and means to make their own interpretations and to argue it. And of course, the fact that the Labour Party is in court means that they do not believe that this election is, constitu is constitutional. And so I, I just didn't, um, I, I didn't quite see why it would be um, termed fascist. I mean, we could, I think um, a charitable way of reading Professor Schoenka's comment is that Professor Schoenka himself, um, I think it's fair to say that he is not given to restraint in language um, in general. And so maybe that's where that word fascist came from. However, I have suggestions for what we could use fascist for. We could use fascist for INEC because as it is right now, many Nigerians feel deeply cheated by INEC, um, deeply disenfranchised by INEC. And there's an authoritarianism, which obviously is the basis of fascism, at the center of manipulating an election um, because what you're doing is you're gagging people you're forcibly taking away their voice that is fascist fascist is all of the violence that happened during the elections um, fascist is the way that some people remain silent about about that violence 
Um, fascist is, uh, you know, fascist is a, is a government that hasn't come out to address the, the very tangible and palpable discontent in this country. You know, I think that, um, that and when I say that fa we can use fascist for INEC, what I mean is the fact that, you know, so many of us, including myself, are convinced that this was not in any way technological um, glitch. I think that Professor um, Yakubu had an opportunity for heroism, and I think he wasted it spectacularly. Um, because he could very easily have become the hero of not just Nigerians, but Africa. Because so many Africans are watching. Um, they were so inspired by what happened before this election and the, the obedient movement. And, and so, you know, I also think that the president, um, President Buhari, missed an opportunity for heroism, maybe his last chance at heroism. Because Nigerians do not feel that he, I think Nigerians felt before the elections that he meant well and meant um, Out of to time. support credible elections. I don't think many Nigerians think that now. Right. And I wish that he had taken a, a page from um, you know, the former Very president. Very briefly, because we're out of time. He was a really good man, a moral man. Right. Mm. Just, just uh, literally 10 seconds, the opposition parties are challenging the election in court. Do you think they'll get a fair hearing? Um, I hope they will. I think there's reason to doubt that because the Supreme Court has had um, rulings that just did not make a lot of sense to most people. And so there's reason to worry, but I'm hopeful. I'm generally hopeful. So I'm, I'm optimistic that they will um, do the right thing and that people will get justice. I will tell you this, that <coughs> that girl is full of wisdom. I'm so excited watching her interview on our rice television this is just a highlight of what she made out of the election which every one of us knew but seeing apc running up and down you know acting like <laughs> babies that are still sucking breast yeah and things like this you know i must tell you that she hit the point straight on what really got me is the interpretation and the position of the constitution regarding the Abuja 25%. He, she actually, don't mistake me for using he because that girl is doing more than a man can do. I can tell you that. So the chief, Amanda Odelowa, she had taking these guys to class to really define this. It is not like these guys don't know this, but you know, the corruption and impunity had eaten so deep into their medulla of Blangada. They don't think and reason properly. But they think Nigerians are fools. They try to bring in ethnic, ethnic sentiment, tribalism, you know, all of those things to distract Nigerians from the main subject of the matter. Like she pointed out, you try to distract the whole thing from the subject, what transpired in the election, and you're just mopping up all of this rubbish. Let APC and the INE come out to tell Nigerians what happened during the elections, because Nigerians are no fools, and the world are not fools as well. So I just appreciate her. I'm just making this video to bring you these highlights, and I bet you can watch the entire video from Arise Television where she said it all keep watching and i'll keep bringing you this highlight don't forget to subscribe like and share drop a comment on this comment section let me have your opinion on this bye bye for now